Minister, uh, you're very welcome into the House as always. Although, to be honest, I wish you weren't here. I wish none of us were here because I'm shocked and deeply disappointed that this legislation has been drafted and is before us here today. Because in a mere couple of months, medical apartheid has gone from being discounted by the media as scaremongering conspiracy theory scaremongering conspiracy theory to government policy. Scientists and policy makers alike have been warning about this since vaccines were still in development. There are articles in the New York Times and the Washington Post from as far back in October 2020 discussing in dire tones the social consequences of creating a vaccinated overclass. It has been an odd feeling seeing people celebrating receiving... Sorry. So... Sorry, this is... Sorry, Senator, I did not interrupt you. Please do not interrupt me. I have been, it has been an odd feeling seeking peace. Can I ask everyone to be quiet for a moment? Thank you. I'd like to hear the Senator without interruption. Thank unless you. there's a point of order based Thank on you. standing orders. Um, I, you have been asked if you'd like to withdraw it, Senator. You might like to respond to that. Um, but otherwise, I'll ask you to, to continue. I'm continuing speech. on with my speech. It has been an odd feeling seeing people celebrating receiving the, co their COVID passes online. It's dystopic to see people so glad to be granted this piecemeal freedom by the government, as if these fundamental rights were theirs to give and take as they see fit. But I don't blame them for grasping at any si silver of hope, hope that they may, might finally escape the miasma of fear that has descended on this country, called down by incessant panic-inducing media coverage, a dearth of effective communication by this government and a slapstick succession of backtracks, fumbled plans and fudged decisions. That this legislation will be passed all stages in 90 minutes on the last day of the sitting of this House is a disgrace. That the government has put its backbenchers in the position of sticking a smile on and voting in favour of this, not to mention waiving pre-legislative scrutiny, is an insult to their own party members, many of whom share serious concerns regarding this targeting, dividing of society. The Deputy Leader of this House said online only last month, I believe the government have made the wrong decision to proceed with a plan to allow only fully vaccinated people back to indoor hospitality. We are splitting the people and leaving younger people behind, the very cohort that have shouldered the greatest burden to protect others. However, the whip has been cracked and the line must be told. It's a sorry way to do business. It's not as if we're reopening society, took us by surprise. It's been, it's been talked about for over 18 months, yet time and time again, aspirational roadmaps were found to be worthless than the paper they were written on, and the government couldn't conjure up anything more insightful or effective than sitting on their hands and adopting a wait-and-see approach, kicking dates down the line as vaccines trundled out. At least in effort, for all their faults, had the decency to model multiple scenarios, none of which the government thought merited a contingency plan. Instead, we have a plan that has hashed out over two weeks in consultation with the hospitality industry, which was given no other option. I support the reopening of hospitality, a full reopening for everyone, which the bill does not accomplish. Where all this the case in relation to the harmless piece of legislation, it would be still indefensible. The reality is that I've never seen the floor of this House sullied by a bill so repugnant to human rights and civil liberties. That it would be the policy of this government to draw down a line of this country and also graciously to bestow on one cohort their erstwhile suspended rights while continuing to limit the freedom of, of others demonstrates the blatant lightness of regard to the gravity of such an act. There has been a lot of performative outrage recently over the drawing of certain historical comparisons in creation to the authoritarian nature of this legislation. But you don't need to look beyond the history of these shores to see the legacy of a divided people and a government which treats some of its subjects to a lesser. While businesses will be rejoicing with this piecemeal, the government is selling them a pup, which will prove damaging to their business as, is, as this is completely unenforceable. I support the call made by Pather Tobin in the lower house that this bill will be referred to the Supreme Court by the President in order that is constitutionally be examined. Failing this, I will call on 
independent bodies such as the Irish Council of Civil Liberties to challenge this bill, which sets a dangerous precedent for government-sanctioned discrimination. We went into this together, and we should come out of this together. An, an, an expression of solidarity that is entirely absent from this law. For all these reasons, and for many more, which are not given at this time to discuss, I will be opposing this bill. Thank you.